Hi, my name is Tenzin Gunsang, and do you guys know the difference between sea ice melting and glacial, glacial melting, and which one of these affects sea level rising? Today I will be demonstrating you the difference between them with three simple materials, an ice cube, a beaker filled with water, and a marker. I will also teach you guys how to make a topographical map, which is an outline of a land structure that can help us estimate how far inland ocean water will travel if sea levels rise. To begin this experiment, I have a beaker that is filled with water and some ice cubes. I will then place some ice cubes into the beaker and then mark the water level and we will check back once the ice has melted whether or not the water level has changed. As you see, once the ice has melted, the water level has not changed. That's because the ice that was placed in the beaker represents sea ice that already exists in the ocean, so when they melt, the sea level does not change. I will then add another few cubes of ice cubes into the beaker. And as you see, the water level has changed. That's because these ice represents glaciers, which are broken off from the land and into the ocean, which causes the sea level to change. Therefore, sea ice melting does not contribute to sea level rise because it exists in the ocean and displaces the same amount of water. And glacier melting causes sea level to rise because it displaces the existing water. Now to make the topographical map, I will first cut the potato in half to make it stand flat. After cutting the potato in half, I will fill the mug with water and some food coloring to make it more visible. Add some few watercolor and mix it. Let it stay there for a while and now bring a big container and I will then have to mark the side of the container in one centimeter increments. So with the marker, make a scale of one centimeter increment on the side of the container. After marking the container with one centimeter increment, I will place the potato cut side down inside it and place the lid on the container and to mark where I place the container layer so I can match it up and then open the lid and carefully add the water until the 2 cm mark but be careful not to pour directly onto the potato because that will ruin the experiment so add till it reaches the 2 cm mark A lot of water. And then close the lid. And then make an outline of where the water and the potato meets, like so. You can eyeball it and make an outline. like this and this this will represent the shoreline now i will repeat this step and each time i will add only one centimeter of water and replace the lid back on again and draw a new line that represents where the water meets the potato and i will continue this process until the the potato is fully submerged in water Now the potato is fully submerged and we are done with making the topographical map.
after the potato is fully submerged, you will get a outline like this. But to increase the visibility, you can cut out a circle from a piece of paper. Tape it on the back side of the lid. Like so. To increase the visibility. As you see, this is the topographical map that we created from the potato now. As you see, each line represents a change in height. So the closer together the lines, the steeper the land. Scientists use satellite images and topographical maps to estimate how far inland ocean water will travel if sea level rise. Now you can use topographical maps to discuss what happens when sea levels rise and how the steepness of the coastline will affect the degree of inland flooding. Now that you guys know the difference between sea ice melting and glacier melting and how one of these processes affects sea level rise, you can think of a Glacier melting as a person when he or she enters a bathtub filled with water and the water level rises. Unlike glacier melting, sea ice melting does not cause a rise in the does not cause a rise in the sea level. Scientists use topographical maps to estimate how far inland ocean water will travel if sea levels rise. Each line on the map represents the, a change in height, so the closer together the lines, the steeper the land, and the steeper the coastline, the the less inland the sea will travel, and so a, co so a shallow coastline will result in more inland flooding.